Welcome back to the channel. In this series of videos, I'm looking at how we can configure Raspberry Pi for .NET development so that we can debug inside of Windows but deploy to a Raspberry Pi. In the first episode, we looked at how we installed the Raspberry operating system, connected to Wi-Fi, configured SSH, installed Samba SMB, and then mapped to a Windows drive. If you haven't seen that first video, check this out. In this video for the Raspberry Pi, we're going to install .NET, we're going to install the .NET debugger, we're going to configure Visual Studio code, and then we're going to deploy and debug some applications. All of the commands that I refer to and that I copy paste are all included in the description down below. And indeed there's two file contents as well that you'll need. So they're there ready to be copied and pasted as well. So there should be nothing that you manually need to type in. This is all the gear, no idea. The first thing we've got to do um, is install .NET on the Raspberry Pi. I've got a lot of help from Pete Gallagher's website, petecoast.co.uk, um, so check his site out as well. Um, he's created a script for installing .NET because there is no package that you can easily install. So this um, script is just great. So copy paste that, it's in the description, um, and get a copy there and paste it into the command line. Here we're going to install Visual Studio code, the .NET debugger. So again, edit, paste it from the description. Um, again, this came from Pete Gallagher's website, so this is very useful. Um, this doesn't take that long. Um, and there we go. Uh, we're done with the debugger and the .NET framework. Let's just reboot the Raspberry Pi because we've installed a lot of software now and we'll just SSH back into that just to check that we're all okay. And to create an application. So the first thing we do is use .NET to create a new console application. And let's call this one, My First App. That creates all the prerequisite files. Now we can start our Visual Studio code with My First App. Let's load that up. So you'll notice that on the bottom right, when Visual Code starts up for the first time, it wants to know whether it should create the required assets. So say yes, and this will create some necessary files in the VS Code folder. And as you can see, we've got a, a tasks.json and a launch.json. And we're going to have to update both of these files. And if you look again in the description, you'll see the copies of the files we need to create. Let's start with the launch.json. So I've prepared a file from the description text. So copy that description text into a file um, and then copy paste it all the way from that comma. Notice that comma at the very top there. So now we go back to Visual Studio Code and just click straight after that braces there because that and copy paste. So paste it directly there so that the comma goes in directly after the braces. We've effectively copied one more entry into the launch.json. Now we look at the tasks.json file. And here we want to reposition our cursor just after that last brace. We want to um, type out the tasks.json file that you've created from the description and the, the text in the description. Just copy that again from the comma all the way down. So copy that, just hit return when we've highlighted it in MS-DOS there. Back to Visual Studio Code, click after that brace, hit Control V to paste, and we will have pasted in two additional tasks. We save those as well with Control S. So we should have two modified files, the launch.json and tasks.json. Make sure that the um, any host names um, match yours. 
Now let's take a look at the C Sharp program. There's not much here. This is just a, a console right line to say hello world. Um, you'll notice here we've now got this third um, setting profile for when we want to run and debug. So let's run this one. And you can see here it's going to build, it's actually going to target a, um, an ARM 7 deployment. And then it's going to copy it using the Samba file share. And let's actually run it as well. So there's Hello World. So let's just type in another line. Type the end. So just type a second line, just to make sure that it is working. Let's run it again. So rebuild it. Then it will copy it over using the file share. Um, run it in the debugger. There we go. Hello world, the end. Now another test we're going to do is set a, a breakpoint. So if you had quite a complex application, you'd probably want to put several breakpoints in and test some applications. So let's run this one and hopefully it'll say hello world and then break. Here we go. It's now running the application. It's got to hello world and you can see that it's actually done a break on line three before executing that. So we can now say step over that line, continue, and there we go, the end. So we can actually use the debugging capability. So I'll just remove the breakpoint there. So just to make sure there's no trickery and smoke and mirrors, let's actually go to the Raspberry Pi. Let's have a look at what directories and files we've got. There's my first app as a directory. So let's just move into that directory, CD. Let's have a look at the files in there. And if we run my first app, sure enough, prints hello world, the end. So it runs natively on the Raspberry Pi and we can also run and debug it from Windows. So success, we've finally got our Raspberry Pi working in a .NET development environment so we can develop in Windows and debug on the Raspberry Pi. Thank you for watching. If you detect any problems with the description or the text, um, please let me know so I can correct them. If you've got any suggestions for future videos, please let me know. However, in the next video, I'm going to create an application to look at GPIO pins and how we can watch if they change state. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.